You and your 28,000 friends. Well, that was the first single as released by Owen Quake, who is with me in the studio. Owen, you're very welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. And my apologies already. Did I pronounce the surname correctly? Because you know here in Northern Ireland we've all got our own wee pronunciations and whatever. How, how do you pronounce your name for? Um, Owen Quake. Did it give much problem for the judges, I'm thinking, on X Factor? Um, remember? well, the first name, uh, Owen, was very difficult because the way I spelled sort of an Irish spelling, they, um, they would usually spell it O W E N, so they had problems with that. But the second name, no, wasn't a problem. No, at I all. mean, Louis didn't call you Wagner or Wagner or anything like that. A couple of years since you've been on it, what, 2000? Two. Uh, 2008, it was. It seems like no time at all. It's crazy, it's two years, it's been so fast. How did you get on to it in the first place? Well, watched um, the 2007 series and thought about auditioning and I was like, I was on the age to do it or not. But then I did do it and, well, the rest is history. Well, you were 15, 16 before? 15 at the time. I mean, what, what's the age limit for, for being well, I was on? 14 that year, but now it's, I think it's back up to 16 again. Mm -hmm. But it's, I was 15 when I started out. And quite remarkable. Where, where were the auditions? Here in Ireland? No, there was none in Ireland in my year because um, they were in Dublin the year before. And then I actually had to go to Scotland to audition. And then uh, you do a couple of um, round ones and round twos at way producers and stuff. And then if you get through three, you then you go to like the actual judges then, which was in London. So um, I had three or four before I even seen a judge. My goodness. So we, we, we don't uh, just see you arriving on the day and all of a sudden you're picked out. There's a whole process that you go through. And there is. It's it's mad. Like actually people actually don't know. You just don't. You know, audition up and then see the judges. There's a lot behind the scenes. And how long before you get from from the stage of being auditioned on screen, as it were, to the next stage where where you get to boot camp and all that sort of stuff? I will. The show's all like um, it's pre-recorded, so you do it all like three or four months before it actually hits the TV screens. I mean, the audition was in June. That wasn't shown till like September, or August. Then. So August before you're you're on the live shows, as it were. No, the live shows are. Um, they start there a couple of weeks or I three, October, weeks afterwards. Okay. I found out I was in the live shows in September and they didn't start to what was, remember. What was, what was that moment like when you were told? I mean, I can't remember the visuals of that at the moment, but and I can't even remember which, which group or who looked after you, for example. Who, I, who was, was I, I was with Simon when we went to, um, went to South America. It was amazing. Like, it's it was, tough life, isn't it? It's mad. Like. <laughs> Don't give in South America. You can always say them in the same breath. I know, I know. <laughs> So, so South America, Simon Carl, oh, don't ask too much, they put you in a position to speak about him in a, in a derogatory sense. But there are people who have lots of positive things to say, lots of negative things to say. What, what, what was your take on it? Actually, he was, he was really nice to me and they all looked after me when I was in the show. And, you know, he may come across like arrogant and mean and stuff, but actually it's all like part of TV and stuff. Because when, you know, he came off stage and the cameras were off and he would just sit and chat away to you, like, so... Down to earth blow. Down to earth blow. Making a few parents, and I think I suppose people people always get a bit of jealous of that, don't they? Towards who? Simon. Towards Simon. Towards um, Simon. I will. You know, people don't like him because you know he's he's not um, he's really arrogant and stuff, or he's really rich or something. But well, no, I, he was I, down to earth. I'm not going to ask about any of the other contestants. That's what you thought of them. Whatever is your business, I'd rather get into it, how you felt through all of this, through mm -hmm. through the roller coaster of emotions of being an X Factor, getting chosen, and all the rest. I will. It was you know because I was so young, you know, um, I didn't really have a care in the world. You know, I didn't know what I think life was about, and I just you know really enjoyed every minute of it, and every minute like I made it last and stuff, and you know I never took a second chance. You know, this was like a big opportunity in my life, and you know I just grabbed it with two hands. You had blonde hair then. Did I? I used to have hair then too. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you've changed it now. No, I actually haven't. That's just my. Um, I'm originally brown, so sorry, I just got it cut. I never <laughs> dyed it again. Never dyed it. Let the natural colour come out. You're, 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 you're still like a little boy, dare I say that. You've got that boyish look. You don't look like you're 18. Well, <coughs> not gonna know, but. <coughs> so it's always nice to be, you know. Younger. <laughs> it must be. I have no idea what it's like at all. This is set <coughs> centuries since I was young. The, 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 the career that went into the success, and particularly here in Northern Ireland, did you switch? Did, did I remember you switching on the lights here? You, you were certainly involved in lots of activities. I did a lot of the gigs around you know, the North Ireland that you can't even remember. and There was just so many things I'd done, and it was class like. The homecoming to Dungiven was special. That was probably one of the best days of my life. Like, 
which is crazy. Like there was twenty thousand people in uh, Custom House Square and Derry City, and you know, um, <laughs> I just couldn't believe it because you're over in London and you're sort of in that bubble and you don't really realise how big it is until you actually, you know, come home and see that it's massive. It was pretty massive, I have to say, and, and, and being an onlooker, not a, not the biggest of fans of X Factor, but but seeing somebody from home doing well, oh. there's nothing to beat. Makes us all feel good over here. Hi. <laughs> And uh, with the fact that you didn't win well, got to the last three pretty good. Still an achievement, like there was 180 odd days in addition, and you know, they come in the top threes, you know, achievement alone. So. And, and, and a recording contract thereafter. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did that go? It was moment? good um, at the time, you know, you know, well, like someone says to you, um, you know, you've dreamed of being a singer all your life, and they say, oh, we're going to record an album, you're like, amazing, this is class and stuff, but you don't actually. You know, stop to think about the long run, about how it's prepared and how it's, you know, done and laid out and stuff like that. There's a lot of technical stuff involved in it as well. So you've got an expertise now from having done one. Well, I just like you know, learn a trade. You know, once you do it, then you have experience. So I have a lot of experience, and now what I didn't know two years ago. Mm -hmm. So what what's happening now at the moment with you with regards to career as such and singing and that? Ah uh, well, basically, um, right now I just signed a contract to go on tour with with In Love with the Dance, which is like um, it's a tour full of Irish acts, like full of Irish dancers and um, uh, bands, and myself, and we're going um, all around the world. We're going to America and Australia, and we go to Germany, and then we do a tour. October um, back in Ireland and we're places like in a skill in Cookstown, uh, up in Derry and Belfast here, there and everywhere. So it's sort of nice to get back out there again and especially with it's an Irish tour, you know, I'm from Ireland too, it's made it extra special. So looking forward to um, you know, touring in January. Well tell me I'm daft here, but they've got you in to do the singing and not the dancing. No, definitely not the dancing at <laughs> all. Have you ever done any Irish dancing? I've never done Irish dancing in my life. You know, I'm mucking about like, like Never so, so you're going to be singing uh, some songs as part of that? Uh -huh, I am, yes. And that's, that's, that's different, it's going to give you an audience it's, and it's, a chance to tour. It is, it's different, it's something new, but it's, you know, I'm always on for picking up new things and learning new things, sort of like. But um, I'm looking forward to it, it should be an experience and, you know, uh, everyone here come out and we're back in October, turn the north of Ireland, so, you know, if you get a chance, you see it up, everyone come along. And, and, and uh, would you do solo concerts or performances up around home over Christmas? I do, lo I do local gigs, I, and I've switched on a couple of Christmas lights as well, you know, around the north, and I'm doing a couple of gigs, you know, I did a few uh, colleges, I did Bangor, um, and I did uh, a school in Der or Belfast, sorry, which was really good too, so I'm doing lots of different things, experiment here, there and everywhere. But X Factor behind you, with all that's happened since then, are you happy or sad that you took the X Factor route? I'm not sad at all. Like I've had no regrets. I've came from this young boy, you know, from Dungiven, which is a small place, and you know, hopefully people when they say Dungiven, I they'll think of like uh, success and stuff. So I've put my town on the map, which is amazing, you know, and everything's came along with it. You know, the show uh, and turn and album and stuff, and you know, it's been pretty cool, and it's something you know that I probably would have never thought I'd ever get the chance to do, so I've had no regrets at all. And you're still only 18. And I'm only 18, so... I, I've avoided asking the question, now that you've changed your colour of hair, that'll be my excuse for asking, has that changed how girls look at you? Because uh, no. girls do look at you, I have been told now, <laughs> girls do look at you. No, um, it's just a change, you know, yourself, like, um, I don't know really, I shaved my hair off, or put it blonde, brown, red, or... But more girls became attracted to Owen Quigg after X Factor. That that's a fact, isn't it? <laughs> Probably is. <actually. laughs> Don't they want to get much more in that line of questioning? <laughs> Delighted to have you here. Thank, thank you for coming. And thank you for coming and for mom and dad coming down with you. My pleasure. Chris and Denise for coming all the way from Dunkirk to be here with us. The best of luck with that. So you're in where? Germany, I understand, in January. In January we do a few in Germany, um, and then um, we've got time off, and then February we go straight to America. And we do an American tour and then we move to Canada. Then we come back and then we're on to Australia and then back in October for um, in England and Ireland. So we're doing a lot in the north of Ireland as well and then Germany again. So it's going to take the whole year up. But if anyone um, is listening and earning and wants to come along, you know, get your tickets now because they go really fast and it's a really good show. So you'll come along and, and see the show. It should be good. Well, we look forward to hearing about the show itself in a wee while. Lovely to hear you. No you were lovely and natural to see on TV, and you're lovely and natural.